Let me show you how to take the differential mesh growth from Houdini and actually create a Cinema 4D compatible digital asset. Here you can see the asset working inside Cinema 4D and let me show you what we can do with it. First of all, I can select it. I can go and change all the parameters I have inside Houdini as well. And I have these two inputs. Now by default, we have the ring and we get the growth propagating for a very particular point up there. And I want to be able to control these things inside Cinema 4D. So for example, I want to take a, a cube and I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. And I wanna take a sphere and I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. And I want to move the sphere over here. And what I want to do is select my asset and tell the cube to be my main object. And you will see now that the ring has been replaced by the cube. Just make sure to make the original object invisible in the viewport and in the renderer, because this creates an output, which is an other object. And you'll see both of them, basically. And what I want to do is select the asset and drag the sphere in the growing area. And what I'm going to do with the sphere, because I do want to see it, is add a display tag and turn it to lines and isopalms. So now you can see when I move it around, the propagation uh, will start from that point. Press play and you will see that it works. If I rewind and put it on this side, now you will see that it works on that side. Now, not only that, but what we can do is I'm gonna make a copy of the sphere. So rewind, press command, make a copy. I'm gonna make a null object drop these two spheres as children of the null and make sure I drag the null in the growing area. And because the include children setting is on, then we can have propagation from both these points. So here we are inside Houdini, and this is the original setup with just a couple of modifications. Um, I had problems with uh, my normals, so I deleted them by uh, deleting the attribute capital N, and I added a normal SOP, and uh, it seemed to solve the problem. Now, because I'm not very well versed in Houdini, I don't know why this worked or why the problem originated uh, to begin with, but that makes no difference, okay? Just uh, if it works, uh, then that's fantastic. So let's rewind. And uh, let's check this out. We have an object, which is the torus, and it's only one object. And then we have a point here that indicates the point of propagation for the growth. I want to create an input for these. So in order to do this, we're going to use an object merge. So uh, tab, uh, type merge, and find the object merge object. Now, how do I make this work as a torus by default, and only if I drop another object? in the object merge, in the actual link I had in Cinema 4D, will the torus disappear? Well, I'm going to use a switch node. So tab switch node, press enter, and here it is. Now, here we add a number of objects. And what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do it in the wrong order, I'm gonna just click and drag this one here, and then connect this one here, and then connect this one here. So what the switch now does is the following. It will actually use the object merge uh, when the select input is zero, and it will use the torus when it's one. Okay, so this is how it works. Object zero, object one, object two, and so forth, if there are more objects. Number one, I want the default object to be the torus, so I'm gonna click on this arrow, so now it's gonna go up. So now zero is a torus, and one is whatever is in the object merge. Now I can always expose this parameter and create a menu with zero, one, and whatnot, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to type an expression in there. And the expression is quite simple. It's n points, open the parentheses, and add some quotes. Dot, dot, slash, and what is the name of my object? It's object merge. So ob is enough. Double click on this. I'm going to delete that and close my quotes and the parentheses. And I'm going to say that expression should be larger than zero. Okay, and press enter. So what does this mean? It means, and I think I've made a mistake because it's red. That's why these lovely little lines come up. And yes, because it's not n point, it's n points with an S. Press enter again, and now everything is correct. So what does this expression mean? It means that if the points on this object are more than zero, which means there is an object present, then this is true. Therefore, it's equal to one. 
therefore select the second object. If there are no points present in the object merge, which means we haven't linked anything yet, then that will evaluate as false, therefore zero. So the selection between this and this object is relying on the fact that there's an object linked to this or not. Simple. Now, one more thing. Whenever you use object merge, if you want the object that is linked to the object merge input to be in exactly the same position of the object we're going to have in Cinema 4D, which may be, you know, to the left, to the right, up, down, uh, we need to make sure that the transform is not into the specified object, but into this object. If you use into specified objects, then you have another object to define that position. Anyway, just do this into this object. That's how it works. It's going to do the same thing for the add. So tab object merge, then tab switch. And I can always go here and copy this and go here and paste it. And then we have to change the name. You know, that's a bit too much. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is something easier. I'm going to select this one and this one. I'm going to copy and paste them, drag them down here, make sure that this one is disconnected, make sure that this one is connected, make sure that the add is on top, and connect this here. And what you will see is that automatically the script has changed to have the same name of the object that's coming in. Smart stuff, isn't it? Excellent. So this is going to work as well. And I think that we're good to create our asset. If you want to test it, we can test it. Let's go up a few levels and let's create a sphere and let's create a box. I'm going to take the sphere and move it up here and a bit to the front. And what I'm going to do here is dive into the differential mesh layout, select the object merge, go here and let's go and select our box. Click on this, click on that twirl it up, get the sphere, and now you will see that propagation is going to work on our cube. Fantastic. Rewind, and let's go up a few levels. Let's select the sphere and delete it, the box and delete it, then go into our differential mesh growth setup. And of course, you can see that we don't have these objects anymore, so just delete them. Excellent. And um, now let's go and create our asset. In order to do that, you have to do the following very important thing. You need to go up to the object level and select all those objects that are part of your asset. In this case, we only have this GeoNode. So I select it and I click on this button here. Give it a second and I'm going to dive in just to double click and get the name. So now I'm going to go out again, double click, Press Control V or Command V on the Mac. And now uh, I've pasted it in here. And what I'm going to do, because this is now what's going to become my asset. Right click, create digital asset. Excellent. So first question, what is it going to be called? It's going to be called Differential Mesh Growth 03. Fantastic. And click on this so we can save it where our uh, hip file is. So I'm going to just paste that name here and just make sure it's uh, 03, accept, excellent. And now if I accept this, I'm going to get my interface creation window. Excellent. So I'm going to go here and you can see that this transform and subnet is nothing more than what we see in the properties of our subnet here. So transform and subnet. I don't want to see these in my attributes inside Cinema 4D because uh, most of these things don't make any sense for the current application. So let's just click invisible. Don't delete it. Just select it and click invisible. Excellent. So now we have um, a blank interface and let's go and uh, do some things. So double click to go here. I'm going to press H to find my geonode. Double click in here. And uh, what I'm going to do is go to my object merge and drag this object over here. And let's call this main I need to learn how to type main object. Press enter and that's it. Now let's go to the other object merge, drag it here. Call this proper 
navigation point. Now, go to the solver because here's where we had all our parameters laid out. And uh, I'm just going to drag them over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I've done this a few times, so I know how many they are. And that's just about it. Uh, all the naming and the labels have been set uh, in the tutorial. And I'm pressing Accept. And let's go and see how this looks like inside Cinema 4D. And we have an empty scene. I'm just going to open it. So differential mesh growth. And you can see that the time is correct. Open. Give it a few seconds. Give it a few seconds. And here it is. If I press play, the growth works. Fantastic. And you can see that we have this one output, which represents our one and single geonode. And let's see if everything else works. I'm going to make a cube, make it a bit smaller, make a couple of spheres, one here and the other one over there. Excellent. Always go to four views, they used to tell me, but I never listened. Then make a null, drop my spheres in the null, and then make sure that this is invisible. Make sure that this one has the display tag. Again, you don't have to do that, but it's a bit easier to work this way. Excellent. And now go to my asset, drag this into the propagation point, and drag the cube into the main object. And I think if I press play, it will work without a hitch. And again, I can go here, and I can change any of the parameters. And you will see that it will change immediately. So if I change this to five, you will see the triangles are going to become bigger and our simulation is going to become a bit faster. So this is how to take a Houdini setup that works in Houdini and to make it into a Houdini digital asset that works inside Cinema 4D. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, more of these tutorials are going to be coming your way. Thanks for watching.